everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. And lately we've been making lures out of some uh, kind of oddball materials. Teak wood and Lexan. And I'm ready to get back to some basics. So let's make a lure out of balsa wood. It's light, it's easy to work, it's easy to get a hold of. You don't really need power tools. You can do all this by hand. We're gonna draw it up. We're gonna cut it out. We're gonna get it shaped, painted, tested in the water, and maybe even catch a fish. So stick around. So since we're using a classic lure making material, let's go ahead and make a classic lure. Let's make a four inch cranking minnow. So I'm going with a classic shape and I've made this bib connection flush because I'm gonna use a kind of a different kind of a bib, not a slotted bib, but one that actually goes in with a little bit of a pin. Now, balsa has its pluses and minuses. It's easy to work, that's a plus. It's easy to get a hold of, it's relatively inexpensive. Easy to cut, it's easy to drill, it sands really quickly. You can carve it, but it tends not to hold sharp edges very well. The other negative is that it's soft. You can definitely stick your finger into it if you hold it too hard, and it won't hold a screw in on. So you have to make a continuous harness. And getting the harness in the body is a little bit of a trick. Most people do it by making the lure in two halves. You shape it, you pull it apart, and then you put your hardware in it. I don't really like doing it that way because balsa is so soft that just prying it apart can sort of damage the surface and give you more sanding work to do. So what I like to do is I like to carve a slot in the top and drill a hole. And I call this the drop from the top technique. It's rock solid and it's easy to glue in at the very top. And you don't have to worry about realigning two halves of a lure. Let's get started. All right, so this is quarter inch by one inch balsa stock. And I'm gonna mark it off at five inches to give myself a little extra to work with. And we'll go ahead and just crazy glue these two pieces together. And I'll give it a light clamping with these little mini clamps. We'll give it a few minutes to set. I'm gonna put some blue masking tape on it just to make it easier to draw the lure on the masking tape so I can cut it out. All right, I'm gonna set this little square to 45 degrees and we'll tighten it down. And I wanna draw a 45 degree line for that front face. And I'll do the same for the tail. And I'm gonna use this draftman's curve to lay in the shape of the lure. It's a basic lure shape, so I could probably have hand sketched it, but this will make it a little neater for you guys to see. And I want the belly to be just a little bit rounded downward. There you go, that looks pretty classic. And I'm gonna use this little diving bib with a little pin in it, and I want that to be inserted right at the base of that angle and perpendicular to the angle. So I'm gonna draw a little working line so I can use that when I drill later. marked where I want to put this little bib on there. That'll be the spot I drill the hole, but I've got to find the right bit. And it looks like it fits pretty snug in that hole, so we'll be using a 3 16th bit. And it's good to do it before you shape the rest of it so that you have nice flat sides to hold on to it. And I'll clamp it in the vise so this face right here is parallel with the top of the vise. This way I know I can just drill straight down and I'll get my angle right. All right, that looks pretty good. Before I move on to shape the contours of the body from front to back, I wanna go ahead and add weight to it. And so I've already marked where I wanna put a two and a half ounce little lead slug. And I also marked where the end of my harness is gonna come out on both ends. And we'll fill the hole with some UV resin. There you go. It'll need a little sanding later, but it's nicely filled. 
All right, let's go ahead and cut the slot. I'm gonna cut it with a Dremel tool, but you can cut it real easy with a hacksaw blade. Takes no time at all. We're gonna go down about an eighth of an inch. You can see that's a nice straight slot and it terminates right where the wire is going to come out on both ends. For the contour lines uh, from front to back, I could go back to the draftsman's curves, but I'm going to go ahead and just sort of hand draw these in because in the end there's a lot more eyeballing than there is actual accuracy. And that should about do it. All right, so to shape this thing and get that contour from front to back, I'm gonna use a block of sandpaper. I don't really wanna take this to the sander because I think it's just gonna be a little too aggressive. So let me show you one more little trick. So I poked a little hole right where that I had drawn the eye on that blue tape. And to transfer a spot in the same place on the other side, what I like to do is I'll poke a piece of wire into the hole. This way I can sight both on top and in front. And I can use a pen, align it with the pin both front and back, and make a mark. And I can be pretty sure that I've got the eyes aligned. And you can see this goes pretty fast. And that's getting pretty close right there. You can see I've got both the tail and the front tapered off. So now I'm going to start taking off material from these corners. Now you can do this with a knife and take material off a lot faster, but you can really make mistakes doing that pretty quick. So I prefer doing this. It's slow, but it's a lot more controlled. Now, once I start getting pretty close like this, I'll use a shaped sanding block. I'll show you what I mean. This is just a little sanding block with a half inch groove in it and sandpaper glued inside of it. And with this, I can really contour this a lot more accurately than just with the flat sander. Right, I'm gonna keep going and I'll get back to you when I've got this thing a lot closer. So I've taken the profile of the lure and I've drawn in where I want to put in my wire harness and I'm going to use that as a template and I'm going to use stainless steel leader wire. This stuff to be exact, it's a 174 pound test and it's pretty easy to get a hold of. All right, I like to start off with a barrel twist. So the wire is going to have a little bit of an arc in it. So I'm going to start bending an arc into it. And that's lining up pretty good. Now I need to mark and using some jeweler's pliers, I'll make all these bends. And now I'll mark where that tail eye is gonna be. And I'm just making a kink there, and I'm gonna take it over to the little twist eye machine and put that final twist in. All right, it looks like that wire is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got a good spot to drill my hole here, right where this thing comes out. All right, that should have it. All right, so there it is. Now I just need to fill this slot with UV resin and fill the hole and we'll be ready to give it a first coat of UV resin just to seal the wood. So it'll take a couple of layers, but as I go along, I'll set it with the UV light. All right, I've got it all filled in, including the little bottom hole. So now I'm just gonna have to give it another sanding and we'll get back to it to put a nice clear coat on it. Kick on the lights, close the dust cover. And then once it's set, I can sand it down a little bit and we can start painting. Let's go ahead and make a little bit of a foil highlight. Something to put in there to kind of decorate it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just get double the length of the lure and cut it. All right, so now I'm going to use my original drawing. If you can see in red, I've drawn a little stylized shape there. And that's what I'm going to cut out in foil. And I'll just place this on the foil. Since it's folded over, when I cut this one, I'll have a mirror image on the other side. And I'll be able to do both of them. Cutting it just a little wider because I want it to wrap around the top of the lure just a little bit. All 
All right, there you go. We've got one for each side. Now I'm going to take this little knurled wheel and put some scales on this. All right, there you go. Hopefully that shows up on the camera. All right, I've taken it out of there and given it a nice clean sanding. Let's take it to the paint booth. I'm going to put a base coat on it. So my plan is to put a base coat of white and then I'll apply the foil. I'm going to do a little bit of detail painting on the foil and then we'll put another clear coat on it. And if you haven't seen the video where I make these little modifications for this lure holder, I'll put the link right above me. I was thinking I'm gonna go ahead and put in the black top on this thing so that I don't have to worry about overspray onto the uh, aluminum foil. So I'm gonna use the Createx Wicked Black. All right, that went down nice. All right, so we've got this thing with its initial colors. Now let's see how we can place the foil. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's do the other side. That's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna wipe it down with alcohol and give it another clear coat. All right, came out pretty nice. Now I'm gonna give it a very light sanding and we're gonna get painting. All right, I'm gonna start off with some transparent kind of a black, sort of a, a very light gray. Now I'm gonna use this really small cloth to put in some tiny little scales and I want to have those just below the silver. All right, so I'm going to use some of this golden iridescent silver. All right, that looks pretty cool. All right, I changed the grip on this thing. Now I'm gonna put some red right on the mouth part and down the chin just a little bit. And I'm gonna use this pearl red from Wicked Colors. All right, that looks kind of cool. All right, now I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and give it a couple of coats of the polyacrylic. This is what I use as my mid coat or sealer for over the paint. And I add 15% of distilled water by volume. Let's put some gold eyes on this. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, the polyacrylic has dried. I'm gonna glue in the bib. And that's what it looks like. You can see it's got a little peg. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of UV resin to the peg. And even though this thing's gonna be buried up in the face of the lure, the light will travel through the clear plastic and set up the glue inside. And I'll just sight down the lure and make sure it's nice and square. Well, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the light. All right, let's go clear coat. I'm gonna start off with a really fine brush so I can work around the bib. All right, now we can move to the bigger stuff. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the chamber, give it about a 45 minute set time, and we'll get it out on the water and see what it looks like underwater. All right, here it is. It's a shame we ended up with a cloudy day, but we're back here at Lake Santa Fe. Very little wind, so I'm hoping we have good water clarity. But before I do underwater shots, let me show you what it looks like from the surface. It's got a really nice big action. Let's cast it. Yeah, it's coming back nice and straight. Yep, I'm kind of surprised. I really didn't have to do any tuning. 
It's looking pretty good. All right, that looks like it has a really nice action. Let's go ahead and get some underwater shots. Hopefully I got some good shots. Let's go ahead and fish this thing. It's overcast, a little late in the day, but maybe we'll get lucky. Feels like he's got some weight to him. Not coming to the surface, so I'm guessing it's a pickerel. Yeah, it looks like a pickerel. Oh, he came off. We'll keep trying. what it is. Something small. All right. All right. Not exactly the uh, species I was going for. 15 inch little pickerel. All right. I'm going to keep fishing for a little while. See if I can catch a bass. But I'm going to leave you with a quick slideshow with some photographs of the lure. And I'll see you next Friday. I think we hooked into something. All right, we were looking for a bass. We got one, not exactly a trophy, but there it is. Had to come all the way back to my lake to catch a bass, almost the same size as the lure.